Hi, my name is Nadia, and today I would like to talk to you about the dire need to change the English Bulldog Breed Standard in the AKC's guidelines. When you hear the word dog, what's the image that comes to mind? Is it the doe-eyed, always smiling golden retriever? Or maybe a pocket-sized creature with the heart of a lion like a chihuahua? Or maybe even the model-like good looks of an Afghan hound? There are over 350 dog breeds in the world today, with new ones being added every few years. To help preserve each distinctive look of the breed, a breed standard is created. These are the guidelines of how a breed should look and behave. In the United States, it is the responsibility of the American Kennel Club, or the AKC for short, to help define, preserve, and protect each individual breed. But to ensure that a Great Dane is no less than 30 inches at the shoulders, or the Chihuahua over here has the attitudes of self-importance and confidence, a lot of selective breeding has to happen. And this is especially the case for brachiocephalic dog breeds. And what is a brachiocephalic dog breed? Ta-da! It is any dog breed with a flattened face and a rounded head. And these are just some of the representatives of the breed. I'm sure you know more, like French Bulldog, some Mastiffs, and even Chihuahua in the previous slide is a brachycephalic dog breed. The word brachycephalic refers to the shape of the skull. In the middle over here, we see a mesocephalic skull, uh, think husky. Dolicocephalic skull, think the Afghan hound in the previous slide, or an Italian greyhound. And of course, the brachycephalic skull which is uh, the pug over here, or an English bulldog, or a boxer. And you can see, depending on the breed standard, just how upturned a nose can be on each dog. Almost a button on a pug, a little nubbin on an English bulldog, and practically a normal nose on a boxer. And of course, the shape of the head as well, a rounded on a pug, uh, less rounded than an English bulldog, and uh, just slightly rounded on a boxer. But it is because the standard calls for, uh, calls for a very specific look in the face and the body that a lot of the dogs develop health problems, uh, such as breathing problems, right, because of the narrow passageways and the flattened face, heart problems, because the chest shrunk but the heart remained the same size, teeth problems, there are 42 teeth uh, in the dog's mouth, very little space to put it on the pug or a French Bulldog for that matter, eye problems, there's not enough space for the eyes in the skull, skin and ear problems because of the extra folds, mating and giving birth of course because the puppies sometimes have a wider skull than the female's pelvis, and of course neurological problems, there are certain times when the skull is actually too small for the brain and by pressing on the brain causes all sorts of issues ranging from sneezing to coughing to seizures and death. And of course, over here we see a uh, French Bulldog with a cherry eye, which is a prolapse of the third eyelid, or the pug with an exophthalmos, the protruding eyes, right? Or the English Bulldog over here, who seems to be doing okay, uh, except he looks a little grumpy. Uh, and he looks upset to, to, to see me today, but if we look closer at his nose, he has really, really tiny nares, which is called stenotic nares. And in fact, in veterinary medicine, brachycephalic dog breeds are discussed all the time. They're a pretty big topic. Ear diseases of the dog and the cat. We see a brachycephalic dog breed. Breed predispositions to disease. We see a brachycephalic dog breed. Another King Charles. Breed specific anesthesia. A pug. This is a journal of the North American Veterinary Conference. We see another pug and an article on heat stroke. Notice this is not a Jack Russell. But with all the problems, all the brachiocephalic breeds can suffer from. No other breed suffers as much as the English Bulldog. It is the most extreme example of genetic manipulation in the dog breeding world that results in congenital and hereditary problems, said the chief executive of the Humane Society. A study that looked at causes of mortality in over 70,000 dogs over a 20-year span found that the English Bulldog was most likely to die of a respiratory illness and second most likely to die of a congenital disease. But sometimes it's so difficult to see 
what other problems the English Bulldog can suffer from when we only look at the dog from the outside, right? Because all we see is the flattened face and we hear the honking and we hear the snoring. But where else can that dog be suffering from? This is a chest x-ray of a dog on her side. Uh, this is a mixed breed 50 pound dog. Dark areas uh, is the lung field, bright areas are the bone. You can clearly see these are her legs or shoulders. Uh, head to the left, tail to the uh, uh, right, and you can clearly see the vertebrae, the heart, and the dark line over here, of course, is the windpipe, the trachea. This is a chest x-ray of a healthy English Bulldog. You don't have to work in the veterinary field to see the obvious differences. The heart is about the same size. Bulldogs weigh the same, uh, the same 50 pounds, so of course they need the same pump size pump to circulate the blood throughout the body, but look how much smaller the lung field is, and look how much closer together the ribs are. But what is even more frightening and more upsetting, at least to me, is the spine. Let's look at the previous slide one more time. Look how well defined each vertebrae is. I can barely make out the vertebrae here. They seem almost fused together. And have you ever noticed how an English Bulldog doesn't really turn half of his body, he just kind of repositions himself to the right or repositions himself to the left to see whatever it is that he needs to see. That is because he can't turn to the right and he can't turn to the left. It's not physically possible for him. These are the same two dogs, just a slightly different view, both of them are on their backs. And again, you don't have to be working in the veterinary field, you don't have to be a doctor to see the clear differences between the two. Both dogs weigh the same, both dogs require the same amount of oxygen. And the amount of space in the chest is, is, is ridiculous. The difference between the amount of space in their chest is, is for me, is absolutely ridiculous. But even with all the possible problems that the English Bulldogs can have, they were still the fourth most popular dog breed in the United States in 2016. And in fact, a lot of the people don't feel there's a problem at all. It is a myth that the Bulldog is inherently unhealthy by the virtue of its confirmation, said the Bulldog Club of America. A lot of the breeders feel that because the reports are coming from a veterinary field, the numbers are skewed, meaning that only sick dogs come to see the doctor. And there are plenty of healthy English Bulldogs that the veterinarians don't see. And while that may be true, because a lot of the pet owners won't bring in their dog to see the doctor unless the dog is sick. The previously mentioned study that looked at over 70,000 dogs. In that same study, the English Bulldogs was overrepresented more than any other brachycephalic dog breed. And it was still most likely to die of a breathing problem. But some people feel that if the standards of the breed were to change, then the dog will look different and it will no longer be an English Bulldog. And I would like you to meet the Yale mascot, the Handsome Dan. This is Handsome Dan in 1889, an English Bulldog. And this is Handsome Dan in 2015, still an English Bulldog. Now we can clearly see the physical differences between the dogs, right? Uh, the, the taller here then, a uh, longer neck, longer body, but he's still an English Bulldog. But then again, people think, if the dogs were really suffering, wouldn't they show it? I mean, let's look at this young man. This is Otto over here. He's a Guinness World Record winner. He's a skateboarding Bulldog. I don't know how to skateboard. The dog knows how to skateboard. He's active, he looks happy, look at that lolling tongue, look at that smiling face. Does he really look like he's suffering? But if we look just a little bit closer at his nose over here, his little button nose, we see just how small his nostrils are. We see that Otto over here has stenotic nares. I would like to demonstrate how a human being would breathe if we had the same nares as Otto over here. I want you to take in a deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth, just like so. Yeah, all right. Now I want you to put just some pressure just on the very tip of your tongue, of your, or of your nose, just on each side of the nose, just a little bit, and take the same 
Deep breath in. Were you able to feel the difference? Did you feel how much more difficult it was to inhale? That's how Otto over here has to breathe every minute and every second of his life. And it's not about the responsible breathing anymore. A study that was done by a professor of the Davis School of Veterinary Medicine in California looked at the genetic diversity of English Bulldogs and what he found was harrowing. Because of the inbreeding, because of the need to make the puppies look just so, the genetic, has, uh, the genetic pool has shrunk considerably. In fact, if we wanted to breed out certain characteristics, like we wanted to uh, increase the chances that the future generations will have uh, slightly longer noses or maybe uh, longer legs or narrower chest, it will no longer work. In fact, it will cause even more problems down the line. To help save the breed, a new breed needs to be introduced into the genetic pool. And for that to happen, the standard needs to change. It is the AKC's responsibility to preserve the beauty and the uniqueness of the Afghan Hound, the Great Dane, and the Chihuahua. It is also the AKC's responsibility to protect the health and the well-being of all dogs. There is no doubt that the English Bulldog is suffering. And when we think about the English Bulldog, we think about the England's icon, right? I mean, you think about Churchill, you think about English Bulldogs. In 2009, this is almost a decade ago, the home of the English Bulldog, the place that first described the breed, recognized that there's the problem. They changed the standard. Isn't about time we did too. Thank you.